a recap of one crazy week in politics. This is Now You Know. I'm Rob Snow. Going beyond the headlines. Now You Know with Rob Snow on News Radio. Well, this may have been one of the most memorable weeks in politics in quite some time. U.S. President elect Donald Trump has pleased some but shocked and horrified many others with some of his nominations for cabinet positions in the United States government. The latest plot twist, nominating RFK Jr. to lead the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Speaking at an event yesterday, Donald Trump said RFK Jr. is going to, quote, do some unbelievable things. Today I nominated him for... I guess if you like health and if you like people that live a long time, it's the most important position. RFK Jr. Bobby. Good. And I just looked at the news reports. People like you, Bobby. Don't get too popular, Bobby. You know, you've reached about the level Now, we want you to come up with things and ideas and what you've been talking about for a long time. And and I think you're going to do some unbelievable thing. Nobody, nobody's going to be able to do it like you. And boy, does he feel it in his heart. So congratulations also to your family. RFK Jr. has said many things over the years that have perplexed people, even outraged people. For example, he once speculated COVID-19 was ethnically targeted to spare Jews and Asians. COVID-19, there's an argument that it is ethnically targeted. COVID-19 attacks certain races um, disproportionately. The, uh, the, 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 the races that are most immune, immune to COVID-19 are because of the, of the structure of the, of, um, the genetic structure, of, 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 of genetic differentials among different races. Of the, um, of the receptors. RFK Jr. has been labeled a vaccine skeptic, something he denies and calls targeted propaganda. So now I'm subject to this new form of censorship, which is called targeted propaganda, where people apply pejoratives like anti-vax. I've never been anti-vaccine, but everybody in this room probably believes that I have been, because that's the prevailing narrative. Anti-Semitism, racism. I have never advised black Americans not to receive vaccines. At one point you say I'm anti-vax and that's a bad thing. The other thing, the <laughs> other moment you point out that all my children are vax. I fact, I'm fully compliant with the vaccine schedule myself, except for COVID. I, I, I took flu vaccines for 20 years straight. I have never been an anti-vax. RFK Jr. said fluoride should be removed from drinking water. He wants to eliminate liability protections for drug companies on Wall Street after his nomination was announced. Shares in major pharmaceutical companies fell sharply. Then there's Trump's pick for United States Attorney General. His name is Matt Gates. For Democrats, outside of Donald Trump, Matt Gates might be the most hated Republican in all of Washington, D.C. But he is a Trump loyalist. And he's been nominated for U.S. Attorney General despite an ethics committee investigation into allegations he was involved in the sex trafficking of a 17-year-old girl. He denies that. The committee's investigation ended after Gates resigned from the House of Representatives following his nomination. There was supposed to be a report issued by that committee about that investigation. Details of that report are now being leaked to the news networks in the United States. For example, ABC News is reporting today that the woman who is now in her 20s told members of the Essex Committee that Matt Gates had sex with her when she was just 17. Some Republicans are suggesting Gates will never get through a confirmation hearing. Max Miller is a Republican member of the House from Ohio. I just think it's silly. Uh, I believe that the president is probably rewarding him for being such a lo- loyal soldier to the president. But the president is smart enough and his team is smart enough to know that Mr. Gates will never get confirmed by the Senate whatsoever. Texas Senator John Cornyn, also a Republican, cast doubt on Gates being confirmed by the Senate as well. 
Well, we have a process around here for considering presidential nominees, and that's uh, where all of the questions that you have and that we have will be answered under oath, and we'll hear from a variety of other witnesses. So um, that's a constitutional responsibility of the Senate, and uh, I intend to play my part as a member of the Judiciary Committee in uh, doing that vetting and advice and consent. Would you want to see, the, you want to see that report, the House Ethics Report? Would you want to see it before voting on it? I don't want there to be any limitation at all on what the uh, Senate can consider. But given, the, given you have enough votes, there will be enough votes to get him confirmed? I mean, um, there's, all, there's already been a couple of Republicans that have expressed reservations even before well, the courts. Well, I, I would say it's premature to count votes, but <laughs> a lot of questions. Of particular interest for Canada, Donald Trump's new Borders are Tom Holman. He told an upstate New York television station that the northern border is, quote, an extreme national security vulnerability. Overrun. And, and the problem with the northern border is a huge national security issue because in my 34 years, a lot of SIAs, special interest aliens, come from countries that sponsor terror or are known not to be our friends, come through the northern border because they're, they're an organization that have a lot of money. And they can afford to find the Canada to come across that northern border because they know a lot less fewer officers up here in Thousand Islands. You can cross St. Lawrence River in 45 seconds. So uh, it's a, an extreme national security, national security vulnerability on the northern border. And it's one of the things I'll tackle as soon as I'm at the White House. Asked about that, Canada's Finance Minister Christian Freeland, who is chairing a special cabinet committee on Canada-U.S. relations, claimed the Trudeau government takes border security very seriously. And that's why the border was the first issue that we discussed at this meeting of the Canada-U.S. Cabinet Committee. Minister LeBlanc spoke at length. Minister Miller spoke at length. The head of the RCMP was present as well and talked about actions he is taking, as was the head, as was the head of the CBSA. So we take the border very, very seriously. It is important, first and foremost, for the security of Canada and Canadians, for our border to be secure, to be controlled. And I think it's absolutely legitimate for our American neighbors to want to work collaboratively and effectively with us. Yet less than two months ago, a Pakistani citizen was arrested in Quebec, allegedly about to cross the border into the United States to carry out a terrorist attack targeting Jews in New York City. I'm Rob Snow. Now you know with Rob Snow continues on News Radio. With our expert in communications, crisis communications, political communications, branding, and leadership, Barry McLaughlin is back with us. He's the president of TLC, Transformational Leadership Consultants. Barry lectures at the Telfer School of Management at the University of Ottawa and at the MBA program at the Shannon School of Business at Cape Breton University. Hi there. Hey, Rob. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Great. Crazy week, eh? Oh, my gosh. Probably one of the busiest and craziest in a long time. <laughs> you have an office in Washington. That's right. right? Yeah. They want to just remind the listeners of that. You're very tuned in to U.S. On, Pen on Pennsylvania Avenue, just uh, diagonally across from the White House. Actually. There you go. Cool. Yeah. So let's get your reaction to some of Donald Trump's picks for cabinet positions. I would especially like your thoughts to start on RFK Jr. Makes his way into the cabinet, if he's confirmed, of course. Uh, go ahead. Well, I think the thing about Bobby Kennedy, you know, uh, I, I have actually met a number of the Kennedy family, and I certainly spent a long time studying Kennedy at the Kennedy School. Bobby is one of those, you know, very uh, different, strange uh, people with his own uh, personal problems over many years. But, you know, it, it, I notice what he does is he'll, he'll say one thing in one interview and, and one, he's not anti-vax, but there he is, you know, he's, that's his label. Uh, he, you know, he, he, he doesn't necessarily stay consistent with his criticisms. But I think that, you know, uh, this is the base of the Republican Party. This is the MAGA Republicans. And they love what he has to say about most of this stuff. You know, fluoride, you know, anti-fluoride group, that's around, that was around the 60s when it first came in, and it just went on and on. So this is a great way to, and of course, attacking big pharma. You don't lose a lot of votes attacking big pharma. So whether he passes the, you know, the nomination in the Senate, we'll see. But um, he certainly is one that uh, is high profile and 
a lot of people like him, which is a strange thing, uh, given his many quixotic and changing uh, messages. So he is a high-profile one. He did promise it to him, and, and Trump delivered on his promise. Okay. Matt Gates. Okay, yeah. so I think I think Matt Gates. I think Kevin Spacey, House of Cards, only even more evil. <laughs> I mean, that's honestly yeah, well, like more scheming and more slimy yeah, than that. Is, you know, yeah. I mean, there's a scheme in this, and here's my take on the scheme. Yeah. He appointed him. You know, he told him on board the airplane on on board Air Force One on his way to Washington. While his newly appointed uh, chief of staff, Susie Wiles, was in another compartment there, and he promised it to uh, Gates right then and there, uh, wasn't on any kind of list at all. And I think there's a reason for that. Uh, one of them is that uh, he kind of owes Gates for all of his loyalty. He, he's got on there, if he won't be able to pass a nomination battle, he had to resign from the Congress in order to accept this, which he promptly did. Now, that's important because today the Gates report is coming out from Congress, which is a lot of revelations and details in it that would just destroy usually any political uh, uh, person such as Gates. Um, So he doesn't have to uh, put up with that because he's no longer a a member of Congress. Even if he loses the nomination and in January decides, you know, he's going to run for his own seat, that'll be a new Congress. So uh, it's a way to kind of help him out. Uh, It's schematic. I know a lot of schemes in that. But I believe that's what's going on there. He doesn't seriously expect him to get that appointment. These confirmation hearings are going to be must-see TV, (laughs) Barry. Yep. (laughs) I'm booking time off to watch them. I bet. Canada Post workers hit the picket line today. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you, if, let's say you're Cup W, you want the public on your side against the big bad company, Canada Post, Mm -hmm. right? You want the public to be sympathetic to your cause, even yeah. in, even though it's inconvenient for the public not to have Canada Post in opera. Maybe not as inconvenient as it used to be, but inconvenient yeah. for many. Yeah. What would what would be your advice to Cup W these days? Very important question. I recall back, I think it was like the seventies, when the head of Cup W infamously said, <laughs> and it was on his gravestone virtually when he died. Really. If the public doesn't like it, then the public can go to hell. That was his very oh, famous really? uh, line in the middle of, of a strike. Now it's not as important, uh, sadly, for Canada Post. Uh, it's just not nearly the enterprise it was. But nevertheless, for a lot of people, seniors and so on, it's very, very important. It's very important that they don't look at greed. We need more money. Greed, we need more money. They need to define issues that are owned at the employer level, not at their level. They, they've got to make sure that they're you know, empathetic to, uh, to the public who they have to recognize are indeed suffering. And it's the last, you know, step that they have taken. Uh, they've tried everything else. I think they'd be extremely careful in their messaging or it could blow up in their face. Okay. Uh, let's talk about the passing of uh, former BC Premier John Horgan, uh, just 65 years old, uh, after being diagnosed uh, for the third time with cancer. You did some work for him. What did you do for him? Five times for his media interviews and for his debates in that election in 2017. And he basically, uh, you know, a wonderful man in every way. You didn't have to agree with him politically in order to realize what a wonderful human being he is. He he didn't make enemies. You know, basically people respected him across the spectrum. Mm -hmm. And a great loss, uh, absolutely for sure. Wonderful man. What do you think made him... So, uh, such a successful politician because look it's one thing to be popular at the beginning it's quite another to be popular at the end and he was which almost never happens in politics so yeah. uh, well, um, how, how did that happen what was well i think his, he's he had that irish charm he's very irish through and through he's a natural irish guy you know okay. being fellow irish i recognized it right away right know? right right yeah and he said to me mclock i know you're no nd peer but come on in here, <laughs> you know, that kind of guy. And uh, very down to earth. I love that about him. Um, and he built bridges and was a real, became a diplomat at the end. I mean, he became ambassador to Germany for Canada. Yeah. And uh, because of his naturally innate diplomatic skill sets, he could disagree with you. But you'd walk out of there thinking that he liked you, he respected you, he understood you, and, you know, maybe you might go halfway. Okay, good stuff. 
you know, he, he had that ability to find common ground, which sadly is lacking in our politics today. Okay. I must ask you about this tweet. Um, and, and it's nice to see when politicians who you know don't see eye to eye ideologically do send out these things. But Pierre Pauly have sent out a tweet. I'll read it here. Sending heartfelt condolences to the family and loved ones of former B.C. Premier John Horgan on behalf of Canada's common sense conservatives. We wish peace and comfort in this time of loss for all his loved ones. So some backlash uh, to that. Some people thought there was no need to put a political slogan in a tweet like that. Canada's common sense conservatives. I happen to agree, uh, but I'd like to know what you think. Well, I think it came up to the line, but it didn't cross it. Okay. Um, you know, that's a really important distinction to make here. Uh, they could have dropped that little slogan. I think they're so used to slogans that yes. it's in almost everything. They can axe the tax. I'm surprised they didn't put that in there. You know? Right, right. So they'll tend to fire them in, even when it's got really nothing to do with that. Uh, they're trying to reband. You know, they are. Re- he is rebranding the entire party. So it's a rebrand going on here mm-hmm. in almost everything they do and say. So. Uh, we'll have to forgive him on that for I, I I actually saw it when it came out, and I actually liked it, and the reason I did Oh, really? Was, okay. It's nice to see. I, I put a like when I say like, and I put a like on it. But uh, I, I did because I, I knew right away, hmm, didn't need that. But I felt that a leader of Canada's national opposition who would never be, you know, a uh, walking down the aisle with, with John Horgan, uh, he reached out and said that, you know, reached out to the family and expressed his condolences. I think that's number one. He okay. did do that. Okay. He could have dropped that little phrase and maybe they learned a lesson out of that one. See, I would say, Barry, I, I would disagree with you and I rarely do okay. that. You know, yeah, I, I, I would say if I, before I pressed post, I would reread that and I would say maybe instead of saying on behalf of Canada's common sense conservatives, yeah. maybe I would say on behalf of Anna and myself yeah, or personal, something like exactly. that, keep it personal yeah. like that. And no, then, you, you know, it comes and goes yeah. and it's not even, it yeah. doesn't even, it, it, nobody yeah. even notices it, right? Yeah, I actually no. completely agree with that. I mean, I think this should have been a personal one. Um, I just, you know, it, it, it is, I guess, we're always scratching for and searching for signs of cross-partisanship, you know, yes. across the aisle kind of thing. Right. Uh, but no, it, 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 as I say, it went, it went up to the line. Oh boy, I, I, he should never repeat that. But maybe, you know, it wasn't the worst thing in the world. It's just that he's got to learn a lesson out of that one. Okay. Well, you have a great weekend. Thank you. you. We'll speak soon. Barry, bye-bye. Barry McLaughlin from TLC, Transformational Leadership Consultants. The latest breaking news is coming up next on News Radio. There is no question Rob won't get answered. Now you know with Rob Snow continues on News Radio. It is Grey Cup weekend from the east. It is the Toronto Argonauts and from the west, again, it is the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. The game is in Vancouver, British Columbia, and there are lots and lots of storylines to follow for Grey Cup Sunday. David Morissuti covers the CFL and the Toronto Argonauts for Sportsnet.ca. Welcome back. Great to hear from you. It's great to be on. Thank you for having me. Yeah. We spoke at the beginning of the CFL season, and here we are at the uh, at the finale. Wow, what a yeah, season! I mean, it was such an interesting season because it was really, um, I think, for a lot of teams, a, a tale of two seasons. I think for both of these teams, it was kind of a tale of two seasons. You had both of these teams get off to really slow starts and really only got into their groove. I think in the second half of the season. Now. The big storyline, I think, going into the Grey Cup is it has to be the loss of Chad Kelly for the Toronto Argonauts as the starting uh, quarterback with a broken leg. Nick Arbuckle is going to start for the for the Argonauts. What do you think that means for the hopes of the Toronto Argonauts in the Grey Cup? Yeah, I mean, anytime a team loses a starting quarterback, it's, uh, it, it's going to be a tough road for any team. Uh especially in the CFL, right? You know, the, how much prevalence is placed on that position. And for, for the Argos, the only thing you could say for them that gives them the advantage in testing the situation is they know what it's like to not have Jack Kelly starting games, you know, for him missing the first nine games with the suspension. So this is a new territory for them, but, you know, at the same time, they want him in this game, right? You know, he is their... You know, their top player. 
So it, it just means, you know, taking a new approach to things, taking a new mindset. But, you know, speaking with head coach Ryan Dinwiddie this week, they don't want to completely go away from their game plan because they want to show Winnipeg that they still have, you know, a, you know, a strength in the, their offense and hope in their and trust in, you know, Arbuckle to lead this team. And they don't want it to feel like it, there's a mental hurdle there to overcome. Okay, so what is what is their game plan then? What are they going to rely on? Do you think? I think when you look at the way this Toronto team has had success this year, it's it's relying on all three phases, and and that's really when you look at the CFL, when you look at teams that have success, it's the fact that they can rely on you know special teams to come up with big plays. You know, Toronto had four special team touchdowns from Janarian Grant. He's someone that's provided the spark. The defense, you know, the last two games have found ways to get into the end zone score points. It's not something that usually every team can rely on, but Toronto has found ways to add that to its identity, to rely on all three phases to get them, you know, a chance in every game that they play in. So I think you're going to be seeing a lot of that uh, this week uh, in this game because, it's going to be a lot of tasks to make our go up against a really good Winnipeg defense and try to win this game just with the offense. You're going to need contributions from all three phases to all right. beat this Winnipeg team. Okay, well, let's talk about this this Winnipeg team. Very impressive down the stretch and uh, very impressive, of course, in, uh, in the playoffs as well. Uh, what are you expecting from them in the Grey Cup? I'm expecting a business-like approach. You know, speaking with a lot of the players this week and just seeing their the attitude they're coming into this game with, you know, they've been here for five straight years. It's yeah. something that you don't see, you don't see very Incredible. often. But it's it's the culture that this team had. You know, a game like this isn't too big for them. The moments are not too big for them. It's just they gotta now realize they gotta be locked in for the whole game, right? And you look at. You know how they played in the West uh, final against Saskatchewan. That was uh, from the beginning. They wanted to control the game. They wanted Saskatchewan to have to play, you know, play catch up. So the, you're gonna you're gonna see a Winnipeg team that's gonna try to establish their dominance early. And you know when you look at the, the weapons that they have, Zach Barros is play, you know, lights out. You know after having a really slow start to the year. So it's going to be very hard to disrupt this Winnipeg team because you can't just take away, you know, let's take away their best, you know, top running back of the league, Brady Oliveira. Well, if you do that, now you have to stop Zach Claros, who is, you know, arguably the top quarterback in the league. So you can't just take one one, one thing to take away from Winnipeg because they have so many ways that they can beat you. What kind of game are you expecting? I mean, are you thinking – gunslinger, a high-scoring type game, it's going to take 40 points to win, something like that? Or do you think it'll be a defensive battle? Uh, what just what kind of game should we expect here for the Grey Cup? Well, considering this is the first indoor Grey Cup in a while, teams are, are happy with that the weather won't be a factor, so it allows them to open up the playbooks a little bit more. They can do things that maybe they aren't capable, you know, capable of doing if there's snow or cold weather and things like that. I, I do expect teams to try to open up, but if you're the Argos, you want to win this game. I hate to say it in a bit of an ugly way, right? And, you, and if you're and if you're Winnipeg, yeah, you're, Winnipeg's going to want to want to be showing that they're not scared to go for those big plays. And Toronto too. Toronto's a team that likes to push the push the ball down field. So I, I expect both teams to try to really push for the big plays and. Now, that's going to create a lot of excitement, but there's also that potential for a lot of mistakes, which, you know, could lead to a high-scoring game. If, uh, but I, with the way Winnipeg's defense is playing, I don't know if a high-scoring game will be totally in the cards, but, I mean, I think crazier things have happened at Great Cup. Yeah, I mean, you never know. It comes, could come down to um to a fumble, an interception, um, you know. If you Run back, back for a touchdown off a of punt, something like that, right? Punt return, something like that. Anything, I suppose, could turn it around. You never oh. know. But I, I, you have to think Winnipeg is Winnipeg has to be heavily favored going into this, don't you think? They are. Yeah. You know, they, they don't they don't have the question marks really that Toronto does. Right. Uh, 
the way that they match up against Toronto. Look, and look, Toronto has been Winnipeg twice this year. They were very much coin flip games. They could have gone either way. And, you know, when you look at, I'm trying to beat that team a third time. It's always so tough. Because now Winnipeg knows what to expect. They know what the Argos are going to try to do. So it's going to be a little easier to game plan. You're going to have, you know, more time to game plan for this week, too. The amount of preparation that these teams put into this game. And, and, and I mean, Toronto's going to have the same, you know, they, they have, a, they feel like they have a formula to beat Winnipeg. But yeah, I think Winnipeg, given the fact that they're playing at such a high level right now, the form that they've been on, you know, since their tough start to the season, uh, they're definitely the heavy favorites. Okay. Well, enjoy the game, the 111th Grey Cup. Thank you, David. Thank you. Yeah, great to hear from you. Uh, David Morissuti covers the CFL in Toronto Argonauts for Sportsnet.ca. I'm Rob Snow. This is Now You Know on News Radio. You have questions. Now You Know with Rob Snow has the answers on News Radio. Well, there is a big prize fight tonight. And it features one of the greatest heavyweight boxing champions of all time, Iron Mike Tyson. Versus online influencer turned prize fighter Jake Paul. And it's streaming on Netflix. You have to be a Netflix subscriber to watch it. It's not pay per view. It's being held at AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas. Mike Tyson, of course, is one of the most feared boxers ever, but he's 58 years old now. And he hasn't been in a professional bout in more than 20 years. His last professional match was in 2003 when he scored a first round knockout against someone named Clifford Etienne. Uh, Tyson did fight an exhibition match in the fall of 2020 against Roy Jones Jr. That fight ended in a draw. His opponent, Jake Paul, 27 years old, very popular on social media. He has more than 27 million Instagram followers and nearly 21 million YouTube subscribers. Paul has been boxing since 2020. He has a record of 10 and 1 with six wins coming by way of knockout. Now, a video of Mike Tyson went viral this week because he called Jake Paul a manufactured killer. Well, he is a natural born killer. Final thing, I presume that Mike Tyson is watching this right now. Is there anything you want to say to him? <laughs> Mike, I love you. But this is my sport now. It's an honor to get in the ring with you. I'm so, so honored you're a legend, but I'm going to take your throne, brother. <laughs> There's a fundamental difference between me and Jake. He's a manufactured killer. Television and papers made him a killer. He's manufactured. I'm a natural born killer. That's the difference. I've been a bad, bad man. So the trash talking has been going on for weeks, but. Tyson was a man of few words at the pre-fight news conference this week. Everyone wants to know what's going through your mind. Is the old Mike back? Is vintage Mike back? Let us know. Are you talking to me right now? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I guess I'm back, yeah. You're the star. I'm just happy to be here. Um, I love you, too. Thank you. Jake. There have been moments in the build-up to this fight where it did feel like the old Mike was back, vintage Mike. I'm not talking, you know, late 2000s Mike. I'm talking like, you know, 1989 Mike Tyson. You're the guy that he's talking about. You're the opponent. You're the guy that's going to be facing off of them. You're watching this. You're listening to this. What goes through your mind when you hear him go into that dark place? Yeah, it's cute. You know, I fear no man, so I want him to be that old savage. He says he's going to kill me. Is that, is that what you're going to do, Mike? Because I'm ready. I, I want that kill. I want the hardest match possible Friday night. And I want there to be no excuses from everyone at home when I knock him out. So is that, is that what you're going to bring? Homicidal? I'm just ready. That's what I can say. I'm just ready. All right. Jake Paul was asked about all these... Uh, no-name boxers that he's faced so far in his career. Paul says he likes being the underdog. 
yeah, I'm blessed to be in the position I am to be highly criticized. That just means I'm doing something right. And no one has had a boxing career like mine. It'll be studied and, and judged, but I've risen to the top in four years because I've taken risks. I was the underdog all the way up until Nate Robinson, and that's something that people don't remember or don't give any credit to, but I put it on the line against some of the best in the sport every single time, and that's why I'm here on Netflix against the biggest name in boxing right now. There were some fireworks yesterday at the weigh-in when the uh, two fighters were face-to-face. Mike Tyson slapped Jake Paul right across the face, and the two had to be separated. And uh, then there was a profanity-laced tirade from Jake Paul. The world is excited to see you one last time, perhaps. Can you just tell us the emotions, the thoughts that are going through your mind right now? Talking's over. Why did you, why did you push him there? You're done. All right, that's it. That's it for Mike Tyson. He walks away. Jake, he says the talk is over. You just felt his power. What did that feel like, and why did he do that to you? I didn't even feel it. He's angry. He's an angry little elf. Mike Tyson, I thought that was a cute slap, buddy, but tomorrow you're getting knocked the f- out. I'm f***ing him up, Belial. I'm f***ing him up. He hits like a bitch. It's personal now. It's personal now. He must die. Okay. There is a three-fight undercard. Uh, the Tyson-Paul fight is scheduled for eight rounds. Each round is two minutes instead of three. And both boxers are going to wear heavier 14-ounce gloves instead of the usual 10-ounce gloves. Boxing experts are saying the heavier gloves have extra padding, so that will soften the blows. Uh, Reports say Jake Paul is set to pocket $40 million U.S. from this fight tonight, win or lose, while Mike Tyson is set to earn $20 million U.S. It all starts on Netflix at... 8 o'clock Eastern Time. I'm Rob Snow. This is Now You Know on News Radio. It's time to talk back. On Now You Know with Rob Snow. Call now. And have your say. 1-833-668-2577. Welcome to Talk Back. Last one of the week. Two hours of debate and discussion on the big issues of the day. It's the Friday free-for-all, and that's our favorite day of the week around here. We don't come up with the topics. We leave that up to you on Friday. So it's open line, open topic. Ladies and gentlemen, what do you want to talk about? What is on your mind? You want to talk about something that's been in the news? Let's go for it. If you want to talk about something that you think should be in the news, you can bring it up here. Whatever it happens to be within reason, uh, we're usually okay to just follow your lead. Our call in line is 1-833-668-2577. one 668 2577. Andrea is right there to take your call. David's off today. He'll be back on Monday. 1 833 668 2577. If you have never called us before, just mention that to, to Andrea and we'll make your call a priority. Lots of stuff we can talk about that's been in the news this week. Been a very busy news week, but again, it's up to you. You decide the topic and we'll roll with it. Eric is in Halifax. You want to talk sports today, Eric? I've been waiting all week, man. You've been waiting all week. Okay. So, Grey Cup, okay? You've got the Argos, we'll the beaten up Argos, and the Winnipeg. All right. The biggest right. joke in sports. Okay. That fight between uh, Mike and that other, I don't know the other guys. Like, Jake I don't Paul. Follow UFC. It's not I UFC, Mike it's Tyson. boxing. It's boxing. Yeah, I know it's boxing, but I mean, mm-hmm. I don't, I follow Mike Tyson. I don't know the guy in UFC. I got no idea. He's not, he's a boxer. Yes. Jake Paul. But anyway, that'll be a draw. I think that's going to, you know, when he took on Roy Jones Jr., that ended up to be a draw. But I kind of understand why Mike's getting 20 and the other guy's getting 40. I mean, what's the logic behind that? I think I think part of that is he, Jake Paul, the younger guy, he has a stake in the uh, one of the companies that's promoting the fight. So I think that's why he's getting more money. Okay, then. All right. Yeah, yeah, but no. Hold on, just before just before we go on. I mean, 
like what do you you got a guy who's 27 and you got a, you got a guy who's 58 right right but the guy who's 58 is one of the greatest champs of all time right uh, Muhammad he's, Ali was pretty good yeah Muhammad Ali was I said one of the greatest champs okay okay of yeah. all the time okay. not the greatest I said one of one of the okay greatest. okay gotcha. okay um I mean how do you see it going like if I was Jake Paul, if I was Jake Paul, I don't think it's going to be a draw. I, I if I was Jake Paul, I'd try to, I'd try to just hang on, hang on for dear life for two or three rounds, and then I think the fifty-eight year old guy is going to be out of gas, and then you can kind of go to town on him. That would be my strategy. Yeah, he probably he'll probably floor him, and that'll be it. Then is that how you figure? Well, I think if I was Tyson, I'd want to get it over as early as possible because I'm fifty-eight, and uh, yeah, you're not yeah, going to have that, a lot that's of. That's pretty good point. Right. Okay, buddy. Yeah. Let's let's get to the CFL. Great Cup. Yeah. All right. Toronto beat them twice in the regular season. Right. Uh, all of theirs went down with the CF, uh, the NFL. Didn't make it, and I was so happy when he came back to Winnipeg. Winnipeg will win that Great Cup if they can. If the Randy Oliveras, who I figure is going to be the best Canadian, uh, and he's going to be the most valuable player. Yeah, he, won, he won both of those awards, by the way. Yeah. Oh, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. You know, but he's going to win this next award for the Grey Cup. Um, like I say, if, if the Toronto can stop Oliveras, they got a fighting chance. Yeah. But if they don't control him, he'll have a field day with him. He gets so excited. I mean, I just, I just get, you know, blown away when I watch when he... When he does something good, and that's the way I see it. I um, I don't know if it's going to be a blow or not, but like I say, the, the key player in this whole CFL Great Cup game is Randy, Ol- Randy Oliveras. Yeah, I that's would say I would say uh, you're probably bang on there. Losing Chad Kelly for the Argos, big you know, big loss. I don't like that guy, <laughs> given well, his they personal were lucky, history. They were lucky to beat Montreal. I mean, he only lost by Montreal. Only lost by uh, two. Yeah, points. and Arbuckle. He he played in Ottawa for a while. He's just kind of a journeyman quarterback. He's nothing special. So I would say, I say Winnipeg by at least two touchdowns, if not more. I don't even think it's going to be close. Yeah, well, they got the whole they got the whole province of um, Oak West with them. So oh yeah, it's, and yeah. and they're going to go. You know, they play All two right, Eric. games. Gotcha. And, gotta go. Got to go. I got to okay. take some other calls here. There's people waiting on the line. Let's get to it here. One eight three three six six eight twenty five seventy seven. Justin in Calgary. Hi, Justin. Hey, how you doing? I'm good, Justin. How are you? Good, man. Good. Um, I want to talk about racing uh, a little bit. Uh, racing. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I live really close to Stony Trail, and uh, I hear these bikes going down this hill, and they must be doing 140, 150 k. And then when they want to give it. We're talking about in the 200s, easy, no problem. So I want to take my truck down someplace where I can race it too. Um, I'm not going to put other lives at danger. I don't want to put other people at danger. I want a track. I want someplace in Calgary where we can still go and move our machines and not have to, you know, get anyone in the way. Okay. That's, uh, that's all I want to talk about. Did, um, did you ever have a a racetrack in that area or what? Oh sure, yeah, yeah. We actually had a couple. We had uh, we had one south of Okotoks there. That was a that was a pretty good track. Okay. And uh, we had one that was basically beside the drive-in that used to be in Calgary. Okay. And uh, what they're closed to... down now? Well, sure. Uh, okay. The Cowboy Oil explosion took care of our our uh, drive-in theater. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Right. All right. But. Uh, yeah, I mean, um, let them rip. Uh, let the guys bang their pipes. I don't do it anymore. But uh, if these guys want to go down and they want to show off their bikes and they want to show off their cars and want to make all this noise and go so fast, then uh, why not give them a place to do it? Right. Well, I mean, if there's, I guess if there was a market for that kind of thing, you would think maybe somebody with a plot of land might build a racetrack and open one. Right. Okay, fair enough. Fair right. enough. I mean, so, uh, I don't get the money to build one. Neither do I. <laughs> So, Neither do I, but it's very popular. Uh, you know, close to where really I live, there's a anyway. there's yeah, a ver- couple of very popular racetracks. So people are there all the time. Races there all the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah where's those? Where where are these are these tracks? Well, I'm not I'm not in Calgary, sir. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm, oh right. yeah. I'm in Ottawa today. So. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I listen to your show. Don't really listen close, but uh, yeah. I just thought uh, uh, racing racing cars. I don't know where you are. Um, I don't know what it's like around there. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, you know, as fast as they want to go, 
Let them do it. Let them do it. Right. Yeah. Give them a place. Give them a place to do it. Yeah, you're not the first to mention that. Yeah. Thank you, Justin. All right. Yeah. Take care. Have, Have a good weekend. Day. Yeah. Bye bye. There we go. Off and running. You never know where it's going to go on a Friday. It's the free for all after all. One eight three three six six eight twenty five seventy seven. You raise a topic and I'll play along. Give me a call. Two lines available there. One of them is yours. Be right back on News Radio. Have something on your mind you want everyone to know? Call now. Hello. 1 833 668 2577. It's Talk Back on Now You Know with Rob Snow. Wade in Sylvan Lake. You're on the Friday Free for All Talk Back. Wade, hi there. Hey, Rob. How you doing? I'm good. It's Friday. It's the best well, day. Well, first, I'd like to thank you very much for you and your show. I think it's fantastic oh, to hear very, very kind. other people's perspectives from all across uh, the country. And, uh, you know, I when you had your show and you asked uh, who you thought was going to win the election uh, down south, yeah, I said it was uh, going to be Trump because I'm, I was watching Avi Across America, who works with Rebel News, and they do what they call streeters. So... Uh, you do the streeters on the radio, and I think it's uh, fantastic. Yeah, that's one way to look at it, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and anyways, okay. Yeah. Um, I'd like to talk about uh, Dr. Mark Trozzi, yeah. and I'll leave the C word out of it, uh, but uh, what, what has happened to him and multiple other doctors is uh, it's saddening, it's maddening, okay. it's uh, disgusting, and uh, I could right. think of... So this guy, this guy uh, Trazi, was a was a a doctor, and he was against um, COVID nineteen measures, right? The public health measures, and the, because he did his research, and the College of Physicians in Ontario took his license away. Yes, right, yeah, and he has uh, he has gone to court, and just recently uh, they said, uh, no, you can't have your license back. And you can research it, but uh, they, they had a, uh, I don't know what you call it, I think it's a podcast with uh, three guys. There was him and his lawyer and another guy, I can't remember what he is heading up, but he's a lawyer as well. And the system has been rigged so against anybody getting any kind of uh, uh, justice. Okay. And and I'm not sure if it's just in Ontario because it kind of sounds like that, but on this particular podcast they they talked about uh, about what Alberta is doing, and they and they actually said uh, you know Alberta is going to be the leader in this as far as uh, uh, we're not going to uh, uh, I don't know discourage our doctors for telling the truth and and not getting uh, like uh, well I mean the, what the college whatnot. said is that he wasn't telling the truth that's the thing that's what they said right but when you when and they you ordered him to, not, you know they, like he had his hearing yeah you know they made their ruling they took his uh, yeah. license away they ordered him to pay ninety five thousand dollars I know in hearing costs so he's going to appeal he's going to take it to a divisional well, he court has. well yeah to the divisional court. Yeah, uh, but but he's going to join. Uh, actually, he's uh, on the, on the road to joining uh, uh, Robert uh, Kennedy Jr. Oh, really? in the okay. uh, Make America Healthy Again. Oh, really? He, okay. Well, he's he's under and and his lawyer as well, and the other lawyer that was there. If you were to care to watch it, uh, I don't care to like, watch it. No, no, I'm done. I'm I'm kind of done relitigating the pandemic. Honest That's to why God. I wasn't going to bring up the C word because right. we've had this conversation. I know. Before. I'm kind of. But this isn't you know, so much about the pandemic. I know. This is about it's just like the control. pandemic took so much away from so many people. It did. Yeah, uh, and and we're just you know we're out of it, and I'd like to move past us. But this is more to me. This is more about the corruption in our justice system. It is okay. actu- absolutely. Uh, Incredible. I can't believe this is Canada. Okay. All right, wait. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ray in Calgary. Ray. Yeah, it's me. Yeah. Hi, Ray. um, I've been listening to your show forever. I really love it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ray. Um, I just want so many things I could do uh, on the radio here today, but I really want to reach out and uh, some of the good cops that I know uh, really disgusted about something that's happened to me. I had a, a cop pull me over 
uh, and give me a speeding ticket, even though I, I wasn't even going over 60 kilometers an hour. Uh, and, well, what was the speed uh, limit? Uh, well, at that point, it was 80. Okay. Uh, and he clocked me, He says that he estimated me for over 100, uh, which okay. is wrong. And he, he didn't have a clock on me or anything, the radar or nothing. But, uh, yeah, I mean, bad cops like this, they make the good cops look bad. And I, I just want all the bad cops out there to know that we're watching you. We're looking. And, uh, you know, you're going to be outed. Okay, well... All right. Well, this is not a place to make, you know, threats. Okay. Ray, I want to, I want to know, I want to know a little bit more about this case. Okay. You say you weren't even going 60 and this guy said you were going 180 zone. Do you think you were targeted? I think what happened was he wanted to get a speeder that got away when we got into the construction zone. He got mad at me because I was in his way, uh, before he had uh, put on his uh, cherries, I didn't even know it was a cop car. It was an undercover car. Okay. So you think he was looking for someone else and couldn't get the other guy, so he got you instead? You got it. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, are you going to fight it? Or are I you going to pay am. it? Yep. You okay. It. You're going to go to traffic yeah, court and try and fight it then? Yeah, and I've already got a lawyer that's going to okay. looking for stuff like this. Right. Okay. Okay. But you don't think, like, I don't know, are you, are you white? Are you black? Are you a visible minority, Ray? Anything like that? Do you think you were targeted for any of that kind? Of, do you drive a fancy car or something, Ray? Or? Well, I, I, I drive a pretty nice truck, but I don't think I was targeted in that fact. Okay. I get targeted in other ways because I do have long hair, but... Okay. Um, all right. Yeah, I'm not a visible minority per se. Okay. All right. I get my I get my fair share of ribbing and stuff for the long hair, but uh, I see. Okay. Okay. All right, Ray. No, I don't know what to tell you, man. Like I'm, you know, you got a you got a speeding ticket. You have every right to fight it in court. You've got a lawyer, and you got it. We'll see. We'll see. How much was the fine? Uh, just want the bad cops to know that we're watching. Yeah. Okay. How much was uh, the fine? I think it was 176. Plus, he got me one for uh, illegal use of the horn because I was beeping at the guy when he was uh, driving erratically. Oh, okay. All right. Well, good luck. I mean, we'll see what happens with it. Call me back and let me know how yeah, it turns out. It. All right. Thanks, Ray. Thanks Keep so listening. Thank you. Yeah, bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. Speeding tickets. Don't get me started with, with speeding tickets. The problem with with that I'm having... Is, is photo radar. Like, that's the scourge of my life is the photo radar. They've got photo radar just around the corner from the radio station. And I'm in trouble. Uh, 1-833-668-2577. They get you like sick. You're, you're going with the flow of morning rush hour traffic. It's a 50-kilometer zone, but everybody's going 65. Everybody's getting speeding tickets. It's quite a scandal, actually, where we are. Be right back. It's News Radio. Have something on your mind you want everyone to know? Call now. Hello. 1-833-668-2577. It's Talk Back on Now You Know with Rob Snow. Roberts in Calgary wants to talk U.S. politics today on the Talk Back. Hi, Robert. Hello. What do you, what's on your mind? I don't, I haven't heard the whole program. Don't know if people have brought this up or not. Okay. But I keep hearing people saying that don't worry about these guys because they can't pass a Senate confirmation. Now, that actually is not a requirement if Trump does it right and he's already put the process in place. Okay, how so? Article 2, Section 2, Clause 3 of the Constitution says that a president can put in what are called recess appointments. Yes, yes. So if you know the rules about recess appointments, what happens is he can put him in without Senate confirmation. The time limit on bringing them to confirmation is the end of the current Senate or the next election cycle. Okay. So if he were to bring in Matt Matt Gates right now, he could put him in as a uh, recess appointment. And he has gone to his senators. They're going to form the Senate and ask permission to be sure he can do this. And they have given him that permission. Okay. So he can put, he can put Matt Gates in. Right. And then 
Matt Gates can be there for two years till the next election cycle without ever going through a confirmation. Oh, really? Okay. Oh, that's yeah, look up, look up recess appointments. Recess ap- yeah, I've, I've heard that in the conversation. I, I, I did not do much uh, digging into it, I must admit, Robert. Yeah, I, I yeah. did dig into it when I first heard it. That's how the rules work. Okay. And he used these in his first term, and some guys were there for two years without ever going through a confirmation. Oh, he did. Okay. All right. He has used it before, but the key is... He went to his senators already and said, are you going to allow me to use recess appointments? And they said yes. And those men will form the Congress at that time. Okay, interesting. What do you what do you think of uh, him appointing? Well, like Matt Gates. I mean, the guys. Matt Gates is ridiculous. Kind of a sleazeball. I agree with you. <laughs> and so are a few of the other ones. And I'm a right of center guy, but I think that guy's a sleazeball. Yeah, I'm like you. I'm I'm a conservative, but I'm having trouble with modern conservatism. Well, I'm just I just have a problem with sleaze balls. Yeah, and I agree 100 percent with yeah. that. He, yeah. in particular, is one of the worst of Trump's choices. Yeah. But he's not the only bad one. But that's how he can get them in and not go through the confirmation process. He's got two years. Okay, interesting, Robert. Thanks for bringing that up. Yeah, okay. Very cool. Okay. People are doing their homework there. Uh, in Listol, Kyle. Yes, sir. Yes, I would sir. like to talk about the uh, fight. I think okay. I saw this in a movie once. Wasn't it season? Wasn't it the fifth installment of Rocky, where uh, he was an old man or he was an older guy versus a younger uh, punk kid that was, uh, that thought he he, would, he could beat Rocky? I mean, let's be honest here. This this isn't a real boxing match. I understand that they are going to get into a ring. They're going to fight and all that stuff. Right. But I'm not saying it's rigged, but they sign these gentleman contracts where, you know, you can only do so much and, you know, you can, you can only punch and, 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 and do whatever they can. You know, but, they're you know, they're making money. At the end of the day, this is a big pay-per-view or the, the amount of money that they're going to be made. I don't know if it's pay-per-view. I know you can watch it on Netflix. But what I'm saying is, is the amount of money that's being – in this, like, do you really think that it's going to be a one-punch knockout? No. It's, it's, you've got a 27-year-old kid or however old he is versus a 57-year-old kid I don't, or a 50 or 7-year-old person. I don't think that Jake Paul should be fighting a 57-year-old guy. I mean, it, it, like, Jake Paul's not even, he's not even a top-10 current boxer, I don't think, um, at all. So for this to happen, it's a joke. I mean, okay. like, boxing already, you know, has had issues in the past. And this is, you think it's all fixed or... Oh, you think it's fixed? Okay. Well, uh, you know, I was reading today, and I I talked about this in the previous hour. Yep. Jake Paul guaranteed forty million U.S. tonight. I would go in a ring with Mike Tyson. If I was getting forty million. Would you not? Uh, <laughs> I would even. I would well, even. I don't, know. I don't know. I don't know because I, I don't know if I get out of the ring. I don't know if I get out of the ring in one place, in one piece. Um, and uh, Tyson is getting twenty million. Again, I, I would you not would you not go in a ring for twenty or forty million dollars? I mean, come on here. I would I don't know. not I in the would, shape would, I'm in go. now. No. No, I mean like, <laughs> like, 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 like you and I. Like, imagine you and I going in a ring, right? Like I, I'm 35. You know, you're probably what, yeah. 40, 41, right? No, like, no, no. I mean, I'm, I'm way older than that. I'm in a. But, still, uh, but I mean, like, but, still, I think I honestly think that you got a better chance than I do. Like you're, you've got the you've, like Tyson's got the years of, of practice. He's he's fought in the top boxers throughout his career. What yeah. Does Jake Paul, what does Jake Paul have in his career? Like seriously? Yeah. Well, right? he's been. You know? I guess what I want to what I want to know is: Does Mike Tyson have anything left, or is this going to be some saucy kid beating up an old man? I mean, that's what I want to know. That's why I'm going to watch tonight. I'm going to watch it. I'm I'm just curious, just as much as you are. Thank you, right. Bob. Thank you, Kyle. Bye bye. Good yep. to hear from you again. Thank you. All right. Be right back. It's uh, busy on the Friday free for all today, so you may want to grab a line while there's one open there, and there's one open right there, line one. One eight three three six six eight twenty five seventy seven. Talk back on News Radio. Have something on your mind you want everyone to know? Call now. Hello. One eight three three six six eight twenty five seventy seven. It's Talk Back on Now You Know with Rob Snow. Friday free for all, wide open on topics. Let's go to Calgary. Andrew, you're on the air. Andrew, what's on your mind today? Rob, thank you so much for having. Yeah, you're welcome. For people yeah. to talk and discuss. <laughs> Hey, long time. Uh, I, yeah, I used to get calls from you. What's going on? Yeah, uh, just busy, and I, I listen to you all the time. But That's good. Today I'm off, so I get to call you. <laughs> okay, good, good. What's on your mind? Yeah. Um, so I heard the last gentleman about the police officers and how they go on power trips. And, and I've had two incidents. One, I got hit by somebody, so it was a hit and run, right? Okay. And absolutely no sympathy from the cops. 
Right. I don't know if, well, they're, if, they're, if they're just cold to it or if they're just used to it. Like, they literally took my – I haven't heard nothing since then, but okay. whatever. It is what it is. But the, the, the last one I had is I understand I was in the wrong. I did a U-turn. I did not know it's illegal to do a U-turn in between in- intersections. Okay. I did not know that. But okay. in the process of him pulling me over, he almost hit me because he did a U-turn right. at, a, at a red light. And he was, it was a truck, undercover truck. I didn't even know it was a police officer. Right. He almost hit me. I had to slam on my brakes, and then he turned his lights on. Okay. So he gave me a ticket for an illegal U-turn while well, he did one, almost hitting me. Right. Okay. And I really regret not calling his, because I was kind of, like, shocked that he pulled me over. I kind of regret not calling the supervisor at him, but I did complain after. You did. I, yeah. Okay. I, I filed a complaint, and... And they said that he, the guy said he saw the body cam. He said, "Yeah, it wasn't appropriate what he did." But okay, well there you go. Yeah, I, I just feel like cops should understand that the regular guy doesn't usually have inter- like problems with a cop. Like me, I've had two speeding tickets my whole life since I've been driving. Right. He could see my record. Yeah. No, he had no sympathy. He had nothing. He was just like, "Here's your ticket. Deal with it and bye." Right. Like, well, you have to understand that cop, like the regular man that that drives over, usually doesn't have anything to do with cops, and they should actually treat them better and talk to them nicer. And okay. yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. That's yeah. And I would just say, you know, that people should understand being a police officer these days is a tough job. Oh, it's absolutely a tough right? job. I love police officers. I respect them yeah. so much. But when you see somebody like me that has literally never inter- like problems with cops. Have you know? Talk to them nicely. You understand? I know. Them. I know. Yeah. I understand the stress they go. I understand the the, the trouble they go through because they see a lot of bad stuff. Sure. I'm sure they do. I have yeah. two. I have and they're under more scrutiny than ever before, right? Yeah. And yeah, one that's wrong that's move, and it can be. Can. I wouldn't yeah. say the end of your career, but it can be. It can impact your career. Yeah. Second. Right. Second can end your. Everybody's career got a phone these days. Everybody's yeah. watching. You know, like the lot that caller said. You know, we're watching you. We're watching you, copper. You know, like. Yeah, I don't know. But, okay. But yeah, All right, Andrew, I got you. I go ahead. And some other people want to talk about the police today as well, like uh, in Cochrane, Alberta. Wayne, you're on the air. Wayne, hi there. Hi, Rob. Hi, Wayne. What's uh, on your mind? I was a police officer for 25 years. And, yeah. uh, you know, the, the thing is that, well, first of all, the last caller, um, the police are uh, able to, to, to pull you over and, and do exactly the, the same thing that you did that was illegal. What they're doing is not illegal. It's it's uh, it's provided for under the, uh, the Traffic Safety Act, and that would be, I, I would imagine, the same right across the country. Uh, even though you know we have provincial uh, legislation in each province to deal with uh, with traffic, but uh, the 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 legislation does provide for the police to be able to break the law in order to get the offender. So that's one thing. The other thing is that uh, the, the previous caller that uh, that had called about, uh, uh, you know, the erratic driver and him using his horn, uh, I suspect that there's obviously another side to that uh, story. Uh, and uh, nowadays, there is video in, in a lot of uh, uh, police cars, if not a body cam. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, and so, uh, you know, when, when they do disclosure, when they get the disclosure, when, uh, as a result of, of pleading not guilty, uh, they may find out that, uh, whoops, um, you know, it uh, doesn't look so good for me uh, now. That might that could be the case. Could be the case. Be. And, and, and yeah. all, all I'm saying is that there's another. There's two sides to this. Of course, and, sir. Yeah. And certainly, that 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 fellow is is certainly entitled to his day in court, but uh, I don't. You know, there's not too many police officers out there willing to risk a six-figure income. Uh, that I mean, yeah. They're, they're plus, well, you know, the time and the well, effort and the paperwork and everything else that's involved with 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 that's stuff. Right. You know. The other thing yeah. is, uh, just a quick comment about photo radar. That that isn't the police, uh, at least in Alberta. They are uh, they're peace officers, but they're not police officers. That's something that the city. Uh, oh, I know all about it, sir. It's it, I, no, look. So, we're we're in Ottawa. We're in Ottawa, the nation's capital, right. where we have, you know, uh, uh, budget problems. <laughs> right, right, right. Exactly. And they're trying and to. A, I think exactly one of the reasons. This is my own suspicion because this one that keeps getting me is one of the top 
photo radar cameras in the entire city, more than a million people. It's um, there, last year there were twenty thousand tickets issued by this one camera. Right, and it's and, and it's a cash cow. Cash cow, and, yeah. Um, yeah. And, and 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 municipalities uh, depend on that. In Alberta, they've started to step in a little bit. Uh, the provincial government has and sort of take the bull by the horns and say, you know what, we're not we're not going to go through this uh, in areas it's not justified. And uh, and so yeah. at least there is some. You know, and I was certainty. driving by here and I was obeying the speed limit right where I know this camera is now. And I noticed everyone around me was also going the speed limit as well. So it's obviously effective as a speed reduction measure. But I was also thinking like where this radio station is, we're in an industrial area. We're not even in a residential area. Like it's four lanes of traffic and there's nothing but low rise industrial buildings all around here. It's not like we're in some, that's what frustrates me. Anyway, don't get me started. I'm already in enough trouble with my wife as it is because the, the, I was driving, well, I was driving her car at the time. So, okay. Uh, and yet, and just, just quickly. Yes. And, and, and that the whole, the whole, um, installation of photo radar takes away the discretion of any person that's enforcing that right so that yes. if if you do stop somebody and they say you know what i i my 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 father's sick or you know whatever whatever uh, yeah. i didn't have i didn't have my 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 mind on the road and like can you give me a break and, plus and it's, i don't think sometimes do yeah sorry wayne i don't think it's a good replacement for police work either uh, some people are speeding because they're impaired. Some people are speeding because they're up to no good. They may have guns in the car. They they, they may be high on drugs. They, they whatever, right? So, well, um, it can be an effective tool, but but it it's not good in places where it's not warranted. Okay, and, thank uh, you, that's Wayne. All I have to say about that. Take Gotta care. go. Yep. Have a Bye. have a good day. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay, Friday free for all talk back hour. Uh, let's go to Charlie Gray Highlands. Gray Highlands, Charlie. Hello, Charlie. Hello, uh, uh, Rob. Yeah. Rob, you, t- you hit up right on the head. I was uh, into a little bit of this. Uh, uh, the greatest fight that I was ever at, I ever seen, was uh, uh, Chevallo versus uh, Mike Tyson, uh, March the 29th, 1966, Madison Square Garden. They both went. It was a 15-rounder. They beat the hell out of each other for 15 rounds. They both walked away. Um, George uh, Chevallo versus who? Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali. Okay, you said Mike Tyson. I thought. I thought. No, no, Muhammad yeah. Ali. Okay, yeah. but Chevallo right. versus Muhammad Ali. That must okay, have been a great and one, yeah. them went to fifteen rounds. Yeah, I knew I knew George uh, fairly well, and okay. uh, I met Ali uh, about a week before that fight at uh, a boxing club on Queen Street. I was in there. I used to do a little fooling around with that too, uh, and um, it was a great fight. And as far as Mike Tyson goes. Mike Tyson was never rated as a great fighter. Who did he ever beat was any good? Well, yeah, he beat a lot of guys. There's a lot of guys, yeah, but they weren't really ranked up. You know, Mike Tyson, he wouldn't have lost a one round with Ali or Chevallo. I don't know. 15, 15 rounds, man. I was there, and it was some fight. I I'm, got sure it was. I'm sure it was. I'm sure I got eight pictures of my scrapbook and a tool and go. Well, I mean, you it. know, like he went up against like his big first big title fight. He went up against Spinks. Spinks was the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world at the time. The yeah, guy goes in there, he beats the months. he beats the guy, the guy to a snot in fourteen seconds. Yeah, but Muhammad Ali knocked like fourteen out seconds Bear, uh, uh-huh. from Florida the first time. He knocked him out in a minute. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I mean, Ali, and uh, he said he said about George Chevallo. He said he was the toughest guy I've ever fought. Of course, and, uh, yeah. People, uh, he was a Canadian. People yeah. don't mention his name. I just heard you no. mention all them fighters' name, but they were a little bit. Well, back George Chevallo is before my time. I know who George Chevallo is, of course, but I I never saw a George Chevallo fight because he was way before my time. I mentioned the guys who were, yeah, that's, you that's, know, that's in, the my, reason why my, in my era. I watched the guys who were in my era, like marvelous Marvin Hagler. He was a great fighter. I love watching that guy. Uh, Hitman Hearns, he was a great fighter. Sugar Ray Leonard, as I said, those all those great fighters in the back but of those But these old fighters, man, they went sometimes 10 rounds. A lot of these fighters today, they never go 10 rounds. Yeah, and I, I think that's the reason why they put all these protections. The guy's 58 years old now, so it's going to be a two-minute round instead of a three-minute round. They're going to have heavier gloves instead of the lighter gloves, all, all of these kinds of things, right? So anyway, um, are you going to watch it, Charlie, at all? Or? Well, I'm going to try. I'm like, you know, I'm like computer, and... Uh, yeah. 
you. What's going on? Well, you have to have a show, Netflix. Great show today, Rob. Uh, well, thank you. are know, getting right into the old guys today. <laughs> I know. Lots of boxing fans out there. I'm kind of surprised, actually, that they're... We, we are... should get a match going between you and Mike Farlow. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> That'd be a great fight. You think it'd be kind of like Trudeau Brasso, like a Trudeau Brasso kind of thing? Yeah, yeah, you and Mike Farlow. <laughs> okay. Yeah, right. Okay. Thank I don't. I don't know anybody who would want to pay to see that. Uh, <laughs> Grant in uh, Kitchener. Grant. Yeah, I can see this fight going, being stopped in the mid-third round because I. Okay. I I've been googling Mike Tyson's health. Yeah. You realize that he had a health scare two or three months ago. Well, it was back in the summer, yeah. It was because the fight was going to supposed to be in the summer, right? Yeah, he. Yeah, and he yeah. had some something wrong with his stomach or something. He couldn't yeah, fight. Yeah, he was yeah. dizzy, and then he coughed up blood. Yeah, and then found out that he has uh, has an ulcer. So, so I, I have a distinct feeling that it's just gonna. You think they're going to call it in the third round that he's not fit enough to yeah. be in there? Okay, all right. Yeah, I I wouldn't want to be. If I'm Mike Tyson, I've got that kind of illness. I wouldn't want to be fighting. Well, I mean, he's had to pass all kinds of tests just to be allowed to fight in the state of Texas, just to be allowed to climb in the ring and do a a fight like this. So they've cleared him to fight. Yeah, I don't know. All right. Well, we'll see what happens. Are you going to watch it, Grant? I'd rather watch my Kitchener Rangers play. Oh, the Kitchener Rangers. Okay. All right. Yep. Well, enjoy that, Grant. Thank you. Yeah. For your call. All right. Give us a call, folks. 1-833-668-2577. There are some other topics that we can talk about in this hour of the program. Lots of material to work with this week, but there is the big fight tonight. If you do want to talk about that, we can talk about that. 1-833-668-2577. Friday free-for-all. So, you know, it's wide open today. You take the lead, and I shall follow. It's News Radio. Have something on your mind you want everyone to know? Call now. Hello. 1-833-668-2577. It's Talk Back on Now You Know with Rob Snow. Ernie in Kitchener, you're on the Friday Free For All Talk Back. What do you want to talk about? Hey, Rob. How are you doing? I'm good, I'm Ernie. Thanks. Um, isn't it awesome that we're able to, like, do the Friday night, like, years ago, like, we're, I'm, I'm 40, so I know, I know I'm a bit younger than you are, but... We're talking about a Mike Tyson fight. You I know. know what I mean? Isn't it like a little bit of nostalgic? Like, oh, it's totally you know? nostalgic. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So that, that's pretty cool. Um, I really hope he does clean his clock. And you hope Tyson I, cleans Jake Paul's clock. Yeah. Yeah, I, okay. I really hope he does. I, I don't. Uh, I'm still putting my money on Tyson, but I'm hoping Paul doesn't bait him so much in the first couple of rounds that Tyson loses all his energy. Exactly. Like you know, everyone's bang on with this. He, after three rounds, how's he going to be able to do? Yeah, yeah. So, and uh, obviously Tyson, even at this stage, like, I know how he could do it in his later years where he could withstand the whole time, but this is a totally different fight, and Tyson is not that type of fighter at all, right? Yeah, plus uh, 58. Like, Ali wasn't fighting when he was 58. That, yeah. Foreman yeah. wasn't fighting when he was 58. Like, 58. That's- and Holyfield tried to make a comeback in his 50s, and man, oh man, he it it was awful. That's true. Yeah, I do remember that now. Now you bring that up, I do remember some of that. Um, yeah, did yeah. you know? So you obviously you seen uh, Tyson slapped him yesterday at the weigh-in. I saw that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the slow motion, like uh, there's a couple. I've been following this a bit now too because I've, I've they baited me. I always said I would never watch a YouTuber fight, but you know what? They got me in this. Right, right, right. But uh, he stepped on his foot. So oh, is that what he up, did? He, he okay. On his foot, so you could really tell that he was trying to push an edge. So it wasn't just Tyson just slapping. So him he stepped on his foot, and maybe. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so. Other uh, quick little point I want to bring up or just hear your thoughts on is uh, with the postal strike here. Yeah. Uh, Jack Meat went off and said, you know what, if the dock workers, if they are called back, I will call non-confidence. He's on record saying it, and obviously, you know, Trudeau legislated that they had to go back to work and nothing happened. I'm waiting to hear the repeat of, if he mandates the postal workers back, I will call a vote of non-confidence, even though I doubt they're going to get mandated back. But I would just, I don't know, I just, how many times is it enough? Like, do we even believe anything you say anymore? Well, what, you know, yeah, I, I think... One of the angles that I've been following is um, you have Harley Finkelstein and uh, Toby Lutke, okay? I don't know if you know who the, those guys are. 
They are the know. they're the two top guys at Shopify. Okay. Okay. And you know Shopify is like the huge it builds websites for small businesses, right? Right. And uh, it's the most valuable technology company in, in Canada. And they've been all over Twitter today saying how this Canada post strike is just a killer for small business. Uh, Toby oh. Lutke uh, tweeted just like 10 minutes ago, 67,000 small businesses just on Shopify use Canada Post. Imagine that, 67,000 small businesses just using the Shopify platform use Canada Post will be affected by them going on uh, strike. Uh, Canada Post has a government monopoly on delivering to post office boxes and is the only carrier supplying rural areas. This should not be allowed. This is a bad faith move by the union that discriminates against small businesses in Canada. Disgraceful. See, that's a lot of knowledge that we're not really hearing enough about. That's, yeah, that's wild. I find that interesting because some people are like, Oh, Canada Post. Who's going to even notice if Canada Post goes on strike? Well, 67,000 businesses that use Shopify will. Right. right. Small, but so you could, do you actually see them potentially being mandated back? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. That's, I mean, they might wild. do the same thing that they did with the, with the uh, port workers. Right. Like send it to binding arbitration kind of thing. What the liberals don't want to do is they don't want to have a back to say back to work legislation vote in the House because right. they know it won't it won't pass. Gotcha. Um, because the New Democrats are never going to support it. They won't be able to support back to work no, legislation. Exactly. And I think uh, if you're the conservatives, you'd want an election sooner rather than later because you're up by twenty points in the polls. I, I think every every the old Canada does, regardless of what party you're really with, Rob. I, I, I firmly believe that. Um, quick point, though, and I'll let you go. Happy okay. Friday is, I, I hope there's some videos going around of, like, people like the guys in their 40s and their 60s, like, punching in midair while this fight's going on. Because I know there's going to be a lot of that at <laughs> my house today with, with the with the guys that are coming over. I okay. think there's going to be just a little bit of air air punches in the air as this fight's coming okay. on. You know, well, you enjoy it. And, uh, you know, I, I'd be curious to see how long it lasts. It's supposed to be, I think, eight eight rounds. Well, Rob, hopefully it's a good old Mike Tyson fight and it just finishes right nice and quick. Okay. You know what I mean? I think everyone I gotcha. will be just as happy with that as well, too. Fair enough. Thank you, Ernie. Have a good one. Enjoy the night. Bye-bye. Yep. one 2577 one Three lines available Friday free for all talk back. Malcolm calling from Alberta. Hold on, Andrea. Yep. Uh, Malcolm. Hi there, Malcolm. No, it doesn't sound like Malcolm's there. We'll try and get Malcolm back on the line. When we come back, we'll stop now, Andrea. Okay, thank you. Uh, Yeah, uh, Friday Free For All Talk Back. More of your calls. We've uh, cleared the lines here. So if you want to get on, we can talk about any number of topics. Have something on your mind you want everyone to know? Call now. Hello. 1-833-668-2577. It's Talk Back on Now You Know with Rob Snow. Home stretch now, Friday Free For All Talk Back. On Canada Post, first call of the day on the Canada Post strike. Yes, they're on strike. Uh, John, are you still with me there, John? I certainly am. All right, thank you for waiting. Go ahead, sir. Yeah. No problem. I just wanted to say I completely support management on this. I think it's unrealistic for postal workers to just have the high wage demands. You cannot run a business that loses $3 billion over a period of time without fundamental change. And the changes are, to my mind, fairly obvious, but I would lock in the wage increase at the rate of inflation. Canada Post workers are not incrementally more valuable at this point, but they should have an increase that's, that's approximately inflation. But Canada Post has got to change its operating methods. Okay, so here's um, the company has offered 11.5% over four years, which is 2.8% a year. That's above the rate of inflation. Now, inflation is running at 1.6%. Uh, current workers who are in the defined benefit pension plan, which nobody outside of government gets anymore, defined benefit pension plan, they're protected, okay, and and uh, everyone has job security. This is what the union wants. John, let me run this by you, okay? Because I was reading some of this, I was like, you got to be kidding me. Like, you're, where, do you, where do these people think they're working? Do they think they're working for Google or Apple? They're working for a company that's losing a billion dollars a year. 
Uh, so they want wage increases in line with inflation. Okay, well, the company's offering 2.8%. Inflation is 1.6%. Uh, then they want what are known as COLA payments. Now, that's a cost of living adjustment, cost of living adjustment, and they have been worked into union contracts from, from time to time, and they can be additional wage increases if the inflation rate is above what's already been negotiated in the contract. Okay, you get a COLA payment, cost of living adjustment. All right. My father used to get that when he worked for the phone company back in the in the 70s when the inflation was running really hot. Then uh, what do they want? Let's say you go on short term disability right now. You get 70 percent of your pay. They want that increase to 80 percent. Okay, maybe not unreasonable. I don't know. They want right now they get seven paid personal days. They want an additional paid 10 paid medical days. 10 paid medical days. That's like two weeks. Two weeks. Two work weeks. 10 paid medical days. And they want those medical days to be banked. In other words, if I don't use the 10 this year, I can, I'll can i get 20 next year. You know what I mean? Yeah. John? Oh, yeah, okay. I, it, uh, it's ridiculous. And then, uh, it, oh, it doesn't end there, sir. It doesn't end there. Significant improvements to the group benefits plan, including uh, for health specialists, fertility treatment, gender-affirming care, uh, vision care, and more. Okay? Again, these people work for Canada Post. So then they have two separate kind of bargaining units there. They have the urban postal workers, and then they have the rural workers that you see. Okay, suburban and rural workers. But they some of the demands overlap. They well, have a common imagine- demand, John. They have a common demand. They want paid meals if you work five, more than five hours. Now, I have worked, let me see in my lifetime, I've worked for five different companies. I've worked for five different companies, all profitable companies, not money-losing operations. I never once got a, a free meal unless it was a special occasion like a Christmas party or an office party or something like that. These, If you work five hours, you want Canada Post to pay for your meal? Are you kidding me? Like I said, where do these people think they're working? They think they're working at Google? They're going to get a massage at work? This is Canada Post. This company's losing a billion dollars this year. Free meals? Free meals, John. Come on. Well, uh- come on, Rob. They say... What you do in a negotiation is you throw in the kitchen sink. You I throw guess in a thousand so. Thousand things you know you're never going to get. This is always going to be about wage increases. But the the job they're doing, as as important as it is, isn't incrementally more important than it was last year or be next year. But you cannot run the same way if you're losing a billion dollars a year. So the biz, the business has to change. We've got to stop having two or three different functions or going to the same person's property, you know, in the same day. We've got to consolidate down. We've got to stop this delivering last mile for Amazon. And I think it will require a change of law, but have Amazon pay the actual cost of those services, which will make Amazon in remote locations more expensive. But guess what? Living in remote locations is more expensive. And I'm in Calgary. I don't know. It's my responsibility to overly subsidize um, you know, distant communities. And then finally, you know, use use these post offices for more than they're currently being used. Make them more central. Let's remember, in many communities, they're the, the only representative of federal service. So how can we make them more... Can you consolidate services in there, right? Can you yeah, consolidate exactly. services in there? If you go into Canada Post, can you also get whatever uh, passport, social insurance number, uh, what, you know, whatever you might need by way of a federal service maybe maybe there's a cra representative in there or something okay john thank you thank you yeah good good to hear from you yeah um also in their list of demands service expansion projects must be continued including postal banking postal banking postal banking will it ever die with these people and postal banking the idea of post going to the post office to do your banking uh the place can barely make a, a a penny of profit delivering the mail uh, and they want to get into the banking business. Canada Post should be in the banking business. Leave the banking business to the banks. The banks are closing branches left, right, and center. And Cup W thinks it's the future for the post office. But anyway, the two sides 
are said to be far apart. <laughs> and uh, 44,000 people are on strike. And mail and parcel delivery is shut down six weeks before Christmas. Uh, there was a time when this would be paralyzing. I don't know if that time has come and gone. I, I, I do wonder if it is uh, like the liquor store strike that we had in Ontario this summer. Because there was a time when that was a big deal. And those workers would have had a lot of leverage. Uh, you know, oh, my gosh, you can't have the liquor store workers on strike. It's the May 2-4 long weekend. Or there is Canada Day. Uh, and yet this summer, most people in Ontario barely notice that the liquor stores were on strike. I don't know if it's the same with Canada Post. It's going to be hard on a lot of small businesses. I know we talked about it earlier this week, the possibility of a strike or a lockout at Canada Post. And, well, you know, here it is. The company says, we're losing money hand over fist, but we're still giving you raises and we're still protecting your pension plan. The union's demands are raises, cost of living payments, more sick days, bankable sick days. All kinds of new demands. Uh, in health care benefits, paid meals if you work more than five hours. Do you get paid meals where you work? I don't get paid. Andrea, did they pay for your meal today when you came? No, they didn't. Oh, what a surprise. one 866 I have sympathy for the postal worker. I get it. It's hard work, whatever the case might be. But my gosh, a paid meal? No such thing as a free lunch, and your company's losing a billion dollars a year. This is Talkback on News Radio. Have something on your mind you want everyone to know? Call now. Hello. 1 833 668 2577. It's Talkback on Now You Know with Rob Snow. Also on Canada Post, Kitchener, uh, Carrie. Hi, Carrie. Hi, Rob. How are you? I'm good, Carrie. How are you? This is super exciting to talk to you. I'm great. Super exciting. Well, sort of. I mean, Canada Post is one uh, one thing. But I just wanted to shed some perspective. Because, okay. Um, I it was, until approximately two weeks ago, um, a letter carrier with Canada Post. And the reason I had to quit that job was because, according to the collective agreement as it currently stands, I wasn't putting in enough hours. Um, but I was working on a casual part-time basis, and there was only so many hours that were offered to me. So there was only a limited window. Okay. Uh, Yes, I, I 100% agree with you. The union is asking for some crazy things, but it's part of the negotiation strategy to fall for things, like to fall at the end of the negotiation to things that are more reasonable. Right. And two of the things that, that blew my mind when I first started as a Canada Post employee and a letter carrier specifically, there are zero in my 18-year career, um, mostly in white-collar and tech professions, there are zero long-term and short-term disability benefits currently okay. in the collective agreement. All right. But when you think about how physical that job is, it yeah. is wild to have to call WSIB if you have a fall or if you have something else that's going on. And, and that's the current collective agreement. So it's those types of benefits that they're really... Well, they're saying about. right now, it says, and I have the Cup W demands right in front of me here. I mean, yeah, they're ava- yeah. publicly available right from their website, okay? I know. And Increase short-term RFP. disability payments from 70% to 80% of our wages and increase injury on duty payments. So if you get work you know, injured on the job, I guess, to 88%. In other words, you get 88% of your pay. So but short... Really- t- okay, go ahead. Sorry. It's a, it's a limited number of employees that get that. It's not. Oh, everybody. you're saying it's a limited number of employees. Okay. Yeah, it, it's not. It's not included everybody. Um, well, well, how would you? How would you? What right. are you saying? You would like you weren't part of the benefits plan at Canada Post. I was. I was not part of the benefits plan because you didn't have enough hours to qualify for benefits. Is that? Yep. yep. Okay. All right. I I didn't have enough hours to qualify for a uniform. Oh, for a I uniform. I didn't have okay. enough hours to qualify for. Uh, and, and no shoe allowance. So as a letter carrier, you you go through a pair of running shoes every three months. Okay, and, all right. And they won't cover those things. Right. Uh, they'll cover work boots that you'll wear maybe once a year, or if you're on light duties. Okay. But they won't cover running shoes. So, so I, I think the other half of the equation needs to be addressed as well, and I understand it's publicly available, but this is in more specific to the, the RSMCs, the rural and the suburban mail carriers. Yeah. Um, but, but more broadly, the letter carriers in general, 
um, could certainly have some very, very minor things adjusted that would improve their work quality tremendously that they're not currently seeing. All right, Carrie. Thank you for calling. Thank you. I hope it was everything you imagined. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> call back. Call back. I mean, you never know. This might be a long strike. We could use your insight, okay? Yeah. Fair give, enough. give it your you'll be our Canada Post insider. Carry the Canada Post insider. Okay, thank you. Bye bye. All right, let's go to uh also on Canada Post, Crystal in Calgary. Hi, Crystal. Hi, how's it going? I, it goes it's almost quitting time, Crystal, so it's going better <laughs> every minute, you know? So I have a small business. I am one of those Shopify. You are. Yeah, I am. And I've had a small business for five years now, and I'm predominantly e-commerce. So I'm out of Calgary, but I ship all over Canada into the States. And Canada Post was my 100%. You know, all my packages went out with them and I was spending probably between five and seven thousand dollars a month in shipping services with them. Oh my gosh. And I know. And honestly, I have I've switched out now to UPS. It was a super easy switch. The rates are super comparable, like honestly, probably sixty cents more a package, a dollar fifty more a package. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, Canada Post isn't gonna get my business back. So this is what the strike is doing to us small businesses. We will adapt. There's so many shipping services out there now with Amazon and okay. just everything so going on. If online. I could just jump in and ask you a few questions. Yeah. Okay. So when did you do this? Make this switch? Oh, this week. This week. Super easy. Yeah. Super easy. Okay. What What does yep. super easy mean? Walk me through what you did. You go online, and there's a whole bunch of shipping, um, like consolidated services that uh, they group together. You know, contracts from UPS, FedEx, Purelater, etc. Okay. And you just have to sign up online. It takes five minutes. You right. can start an account, put a credit card in, and then you can ship with other carriers. And the whole thing took you like. Half an hour? Maybe less. Maybe less. Okay. Yeah. And you are yeah. confident now that you are, your business will not be disrupted because of the Canada Post strike? Not at all. Like not at all? Per- no, not at all. Zero percent. Um, will it mean higher zero- prices for your customers? Uh, not really. Like not I really? said, it was, no. It, the, I, w- I was actually expecting a little bit more of a cost per package, but okay. I was pleasantly surprised. Okay. Did you have to speak to any human to do that? No, not at all. You didn't even speak to a human being to do it. Wow. No. That's incredible. So this is what I'm saying for Canada Post, right? A lot of their business, a lot of their customers are small businesses and it's so easy to switch and there's so many options. I don't know how much power that holds and uh, like a customer like me who's been with them for five years, consistently $50,000 or $60,000 a year in their pocket for me, I'm not going back to them. Wow. Sounds like you're pretty successful small business. Wait, do you yeah, mind uh, yeah. mind me asking what line of business you're in there? Yeah, so I do e-commerce beauty products. E-commerce beauty products, okay. Yeah. Wow, sounds like it's doing going pretty well. Crystal, congratulations. Yeah. It's going well, but uh, like I said, I, <laughs> I don't know what the, the union's trying. I understand they have some demands, that's great, but you're just going to lose revenue. And if they don't have money, they can't pay you guys. Right. Okay. Thank you, Crystal. Got to run. Yeah, a little Thank bit you. over time. Bye-bye. Yeah. Interesting uh, insights there, eh? Be right back. Probably wind things down, I think, for this week. I'm gonna talk back. It's almost time for the weekend. This is News Radio.